Welcome to the Yoga Love Podcast. This is episode six, self-care. My name is Noelle Whittington and I'm happy to be back with you coming at you live from my hometown of Wilmington, North Carolina. Those of you that have followed my podcast may have noticed that I haven't created an episode in a couple of weeks. And at first I was feeling guilty about it um, and was feeling uninspired to sit down and, and talk to you and trying to figure out what the best uh, episode would be, what could I talk about that everyone would want to, you know, learn about and discuss and what's everybody interested in. And so I was getting all up in my head about what this episode would be. But then I realized that this podcast is just a place for us to discuss our lives and we, when we offer what's most authentic to us in the present moment, which is what I think our yoga practice is about, then that's the most important um, offering that we could possibly give. And what's happening for me right now is oh, free time. You guys, I, as a yoga teacher trainer on the weekends for the Kunga Yoga School, I'm mostly teaching uh, the 200 and 300 hour programs um, on the weekends. And so because it's become so abundant, which is awesome, um, I've been doing these like five weeks in a row runs and um, having like one weekend off a month. And I've had the last um, two weekends, well, last weekend I had off and then this weekend I'll have off and I'll have next week and then I head out again. And so it's been really wonderful to take a week to just sort of gear down and rest and, um, you know, to hang out with my family and friends on the weekends and spend time in nature and take lots of naps. And I noticed in the free time that I've started to feel like I'm dropping all the balls and I've been feeling like I am... Um, not following up and not doing a good job with my work. Uh, and then part of me realizes that, you know, everybody needs downtime and I get my downtime in chunks. And so it kind of takes me a while to not feel guilty about not working on my other side projects like the podcasts and the yoga videos and everything that we try to birth as creative people, you know, my music and everything that I want to do when I have the chunks of free time. And so I've been very actively trying to do nothing and accomplish nothing. And I've noticed that that has been such a hard practice for me. And I don't know about you all, but I have a really hard time um, just allowing myself to rest. My body forces it on me. I'm a really wonderful sleeper. I'm one of those people that likes to go to bed early so that I can, you know, go to bed early and I need a lot of alone time to recharge and that's great, but I don't always feel like I am there for my friends and family as much as I could be. And what I've learned from my teachers is that during times of nothingness and rest is when we integrate. And it might feel like you've hit sort of a plateau where nothing is happening and, you know, maybe even things are kind of a little bit boring um, if you are on the go a lot, lot, lot. For you to just slow down and stop can be really hard. Um, but when we do that, you know, it's like in Shavasana at the end of a yoga class, when we are still and when we rest, there's time for everything can come together and to integrate. And we all really need that for our health. And also that's the whole reason that we meditate. You know, when we try actively to focus on our breath or on a single point for a longer period of time, then you know, our soul can give us messages that we're moving in the direction that is our soul's evolution and not um, just our personal will, which is really important because we can all bulldoze our way into anything that we want, but it, is it really aligned with our values? So when we have time to slow down, we can listen and we can see those subtle signs that the seeds that we've planted are growing. I've had a really exciting week of planning a series class for a yoga studio in town that will not involve asana uh, and will be philosophy and mantra and bhakti yoga, which is great. And it's so exciting for me because I've been teaching yoga asana classes for 
you know, more than 10 years now, since 2006. And as we all do, we grow and evolve in our, um, the, what we want to offer changes and deepens and moves. And so I've noticed this week uh, that there have been multiple signs that I am moving in that um, direction of education and philosophy that I am so interested in and so craving and feel like I can really serve in the, in the best way. So um, I encourage you to meditate and to take time for yourself. And meditation doesn't have to look like sitting in you know your lotus pose and clearing your mind. It can be taking a nap in the middle of the day. It can be going for a walk outside in nature. It can be a nice conversation with a friend that you want to catch up with. Something that reminds you who you are on a deeper level, past how you want to be of service and what you want to try to create in this world. Because when we take time to connect with those that share our values, I think really that is the meaning of life and that's why we're here. So when we take that time, we can fill up our inspiration cup. And from that, we have so much more to give. I've also noticed that I have been reluctant to offer um, hands-on assists in my yoga classes and you know, coming to terms with just what I energetically feel is appropriate for me right now and I notice how depleted I had become and it's really wonderful to be able to be in a place where you can notice that and accept that and find places of reprieve. And I don't even want to say balance because I feel that balance indicates that, you know, one is too high or too low or that there have to be like equal amounts of two different things. And I don't think that's the case. I think that we can just honor all of the aspects of ourselves as much as possible. And during those times of integration, we can notice what piece of the pie is lacking so you can think about the pie like your work life and your personal development and your relationships and your health and free time and your spiritual development and um, fun. <laughs> All the different pieces of pie based on your values and you know, money and contribution and you know, what piece is lacking more. And for me right now, it has been my health and my practice. And so the past week, I've been eating really beautiful, um, mostly, you know, greens and fruits, um, local organic food. And I've been vegan since uh, 2007 and, you know, off and on and in different shades and as its evolution. But that's been a really wonderful thing to have stuck with and that serves me so well and to be able to treat ourselves well and to take care of ourselves in the way that we would care for someone that we love is so important and I think that is really the definition of self-care is taking time to be guided by our soul and in that listening to the the whispers or sometimes the screams of our physical body and the, um, the activity of the mind and what it is that we're ruminating on and patterns that maybe have been held over from something that we've cultivated that helped us heal at a certain time but then doesn't really apply now. Um, those patterns that we create when we're going through something really challenging and we're in survival mode can sometimes, if they last long enough, carry into the next phase of our lives. So in the times of integration, we can ask ourselves, what are we doing that is serving us? And what are we doing that is no longer relevant to where we are now? And it's really nice to kind of see yourself with a bird's eye view perspective like that. It has been such an amazing journey um, being a full-time yoga teacher and there's been times where I have wanted to give up and I have felt like I've been exhausted 
and that there's way too much work and not enough money and um, honestly that is it all comes down to our self-worth and part of that self-worth is self-care and not just like bubble baths but being willing to ask ourselves the questions of you know who we really are on a fundamental level and what are our top values and what goals do we have and what are we inspired by and then along the way learning that we deserve it and for me I only really learned that I deserved it after I could have given up a few times and have been devastated by um, you know feedback from my community or um, you know natural disasters and all of the things that happen and you you have two choices and you can pick yourself up and continue on or you can give up and go another route and for whatever reason, you know, continuing to teach yoga and its evolution has been such a beautiful path for me. And I'm so honored to share it with you all. And I would be really curious to hear about, you know, how you've been going and what your longest relationship has been and how you've evolved in your yogic journey and what you're interested in. Um, and I hope to meet you on that path of philosophy and mantra and bhakti yoga and chanting and kirtan. I just scheduled a couple more kirtans and I'm hoping to just create some song circles around my community at least once a month um, just for us all to come together in celebration. So please check my website narayanishakti.com for more information that's n-a-r-a-y-a-n-i s-h-a-k-t-i dot com and I'll post that in the comments as well so what does self-care mean to you and how can you create more free time in your life to accomplish nothing and to gain everything let yourself drop all the balls and see which ones bounce back up to you and which ones you want to catch. Notice your health. Notice the quality of your relationships. Notice all of the beautiful signs of the seeds that you've planted have grown into these trees and um, bushes that have created fruit and flowers because you do deserve anything that you want. We are worthy of being cared for in the exact way that we want. We are worthy of financial freedom and independence. And I think it's our birthright to expand and to grow in exactly the way that we want to. And we're so lucky to be able to live in places that will afford us choices and time and opportunity. So let's take advantage of it together. Let me know how you're going and how you wish to be of service to yourself and what that means for you. Till next time, namaste.